Friends and family, welcome to our virtual service. We are glad that you are here worshipping with us. We have put together some beautiful songs and a congregational video. We also have some new updates about reopening our church, re coming together to worship God. Please watch the service. Please enjoy the service. Please share this on your social media and share with your friends and family. Today we will be meditating on gospel according to Matthew chapter 14 verses 13 to 21. Give them, you give them something. This is the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish. We are challenged and invited to live in the realm of supernatural, not in the realm of natural alone. I'm sure the service will bless you. Please enjoy the service. Please pray with me. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you asking you, O oh Lord, to help us, bless us, be with us and guide us. We commit the people who regularly give to our church, we ask you, O oh Lord, to bless them. We pray for people who are struggling and people who are suffering due to many reasons, health challenges. We pray for them. We ask your law to bless them and heal them. We pray for our children as they are getting ready to go back to school in a couple of weeks. We ask your Father to continue to help our teachers, help our school system, help our community. We pray, O oh God, for our community. We ask you, O Lord, to protect our community, protect our church, protect every one of us, O God. We pray for our leaders. We pray for the leaders of this nation. We pray for the leaders in the world. We ask you, O Lord, to give them courage and strength so that they may lead wisely and we may bring glory and honor to your name. We pray for the church as a whole. We ask you, O Lord, that you help us to come together as a community of faith. Give you all the glory and honor. We commit everyone who is watching the service. We ask you, O Lord, to bless every one of them. Keep them under your wings, under your protection. Help us to live in the supernatural. We give you the glory and honor. In Jesus' precious name we offer this prayer. Amen and Amen. May God bless you. Thank you again for joining our service. Please enjoy this service. Hello, welcome in Christ. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Randy Waldrip. I'm the Administrative Council Chair and the Lay Leader for Rivers Edge United Methodist Church. Some people have asked when we're going to reopen the church. Well, we've met, Pastor Benu and I have met with the Administrative Council. We've met with the Worship Committee We've heard comments from these folks and other people that are, are not on those committees. And we have decided to reopen for, for in-person worship on starting Sunday, August 9th. Next Sunday, August 9th, 8 o'clock service only. We expect to hold the typical abbreviated 8 o'clock service, a congregational hymn or two, prayer, scripture, and sermon you'll see some changes. Number one, and most important, masks are required while you're in the church at all times. If you cannot keep a mask on for the half hour or 45 minutes of the service, please stay home and enjoy our online worship service. Masks have proven to be one of the best ways to prevent spreading this disease accidentally, so we ask that you respect that you respect everybody else's airspace, you must wear a mask while you're in the church. We'll have hand sanitizer at each entrance. By the way, we will have some masks available at each entrance, but please bring your own if you have one. We will take everyone's temperature when you arrive, and we will record your attendance. Two out of every three pews will be taped off. Families of three or more should occupy one pew. Uh, unrelated couples could occupy opposite ends of the same pew. This should give us the social distancing that we need. We will allow some congregational singing. 
You'll have to keep a mask on. We're not sure how this is going to work out. If you can't sing with a mask, just hum. That will add to the music. We will continue our online worship service indefinitely. We found that we've reached some new people with that, and it certainly provides a service for the people that uh, otherwise cannot be with us. The shut-ins, uh, certainly people that don't want to get out during this crisis. So we will continue that indefinitely. We will not have communion until both services can meet and until a lot of the restrictions have been lifted. When we do, it'll be a prepackaged, disposable type thing that people won't have to handle in order to, to prepare. But we will not have communion till both services are meeting with much, many fewer restrictions. So you're not missing communion if you enjoy our online worship service. Now please refrain from shaking hands, hugging, and getting in other people's spaces. You may want to hug somebody. That other person may not feel comfortable getting hugged, especially right now. So please respect everybody's personal space. Wave, elbow bump, say hi, but please refrain from touching and hugging. Obviously, we won't have Sunday school or children's church right now. Uh, if you're, you may have a lot of reasons for not wanting to participate in the in-person worship service right now. We understand that. You may have personal health concerns. You're concerned with exposure. You're concerned with exposing other people. You may be caring for a fragile family member and you don't want to risk taking something back to them. You may have cold or flu symptoms. Any of these things. Please stay home. Enjoy our online worship service. We will evaluate the situation. We will continue the uh, first service only, the 8 o'clock service only, through the month of August. That's our plan. We will evaluate the demand. We will evaluate, uh, we'll continue to continuously evaluate uh, the progression and control of the COVID-19. And we'll make a decision at the end of August in which way to uh, continue to go. So please, wherever you are, be safe, be with God, and be in Christ. Thank you all. everyone happy Sunday do you guys like picnics you do wonderful well I brought my picnic basket with me today and we're gonna use our imagination so if we were to have a picnic together what would you bring to the picnic Michael sandwich shrimp shrimp and uh, you lot um, buggos uh, pickles 
pickles? Yeah. Uh, a few apples or grapes. And extra, extra, extra large cheese pizza. It would be cheesecake muffins. Those are really good. Hmm. Ice cream. Oh. Chocolate. Chocolate. And fish. Fish, okay. Um, pizza. Pizza and some yogurt. If I were going on a picnic, I would have pack pizza and strawberries. Strawberries and blueberries, and I would put them in the cooler, and I would put my cottage cheese in the cooler, and my mac and cheese, and uh, microwave, and I will bring my toys in the cooler, because minions like to get cold. Wow, that all sounds delicious. I would love to go on this picnic with you. Now, do you think with the food that we have packed, would we have enough to feed us? If all of you kids came and I was there? Yeah, sure. What if we invited each of our families to join us? Would we have enough food then? Yeah, maybe. We do have that extra, extra, extra large cheese pizza, and that's gonna go pretty far. Now, what if we invited all of our family and all of our church members to this picnic? Would we still have enough food? Maybe. Just gonna be smaller portions, right? What if we invited all of those people plus our whole town? Then would we have enough food? No, I don't think we'd have enough food. One day, Jesus and his disciples, they needed a little rest. So they got in a boat and they went to find a quiet place to rest. Now when the people of the town heard that they were going to do this, they on foot followed Jesus. And when Jesus and his disciples got to their resting place, they looked ashore and there was this huge crowd of people. They were waiting there for Jesus. Jesus had wanted to rest, but when he looked ashore and he saw all those people, he had compassion for them. And so he didn't stay on his boat, but rather he went to shore along with the disciples. He healed the sick and taught the people about the kingdom of heaven. Now soon it was time to eat and the disciples came to Jesus and they said, Jesus, send them away. It's getting late. Send them away so they can go get food before everything closes. And Jesus said to the disciples, they don't need to go away. You feed them. Now the disciples, when Jesus said this, they were kind of confused because all they had was this basket of food. And in their basket, they did not have a huge pizza or a Michael sandwich or <laughs> strawberries and blueberries. They did not have all the things that we had on our picnic. They had five loaves of bread and two fish. And so the disciples were worried. They said, Jesus, all we have are five loaves of bread and two fish. How are we gonna feed all these people? And Jesus said, bring the food to me. So they gave Jesus the bread and the fish. And Jesus took the bread and the fish and he looked up to heaven and gave thanks. He then gave that to his disciples and he told all the people to sit down in the grass. And the disciples took food to everybody who was there. Now, how many people do you think were there? Bigger than just you and I? Bigger than our church? Bigger than our town? Yes! The Bible says there was 5,000 men, and that doesn't even include the women and the children that were there. So he fed more than 5,000 people with just five loaves of bread and two fish. And the people ate until they were satisfied. And then Jesus told the disciples to go and pick up all the extra stuff. Can you believe there was extra? After all that, they had leftovers. 12 baskets of leftovers, in fact. Can you imagine feeding the whole town with just what we brought in a picnic basket? Well, what we learned from this is that with Jesus, anything is possible. And no matter how little you feel like you might have, if you pray and you give it to Jesus, he can do great things with what you have. So if you're feeling like you just don't have what it takes to do whatever task is at hand, or for whatever you're going through, I pray that you will give it to Jesus and he will find a way for you to use whatever you have to make great things happen. Will you guys pray with me about that? Thank you so much. You can bow your heads.
and repeat after me. Dear God, help us to remember that when we give what we have to you, even a little bit is more than enough. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a wonderful week. Hello everyone. I had a thought about sharing my testimony, how I got to where I was in life, in hopes that I could hear some of yours in the future as we raise each other up in this time that's rather troubling. So here I go. I'll be reading it because I felt like it was better that way, so I didn't veer off my subject. <laughs> I know how important trust is to all of us. I know that everyone's experiences have been somewhat different. I don't know all of yours, but I'd like to share mine. This is not a sermon to you, but what my life experience has been in 64 years. I don't know what everyone's life was like growing up or why it was decided that some of our lives would be easier than others. I was lucky to grow up in this church. My families always went to church here. In fact, my mom and dad met at this church because both of their families went here. If I have my facts right, on the Winkler side of the family, which is my mom's side, I think I was the fifth generation, my daughter's the sixth generation, and her kids are the seventh generation to attend this church. You have heard about the church camps in Bloomington through the United Methodist Church. And I, when I was 13, I went to a church camp in Bloomington offered through our church. One night at the campfire, we were each given a stick. And if our hearts were ready, we could throw our stick in the fire, which was my conscious decision to accept Jesus as my savior, meaning I believe he died on the cross for my sins. It didn't seem like a big deal at the time, but it was. It defined who I was for the rest of my life. No fireworks went off that night. I didn't see God, and I really didn't even realize how important that night was, but that night was the most important friendship I could ever have. And this is where my story of trust really begins. When I was a sophomore in high school, I started dating Paul, who would end up being my husband. Paul was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease, which is cancer of the lymph nodes, my senior year. Even though I had loved ones in my family die, my grandma Belsley, my first cousin Steve Belsley died at 18 in Vietnam, and my aunt Eunice Belsley died at age 52 of breast cancer. I never realized at age 17 that the decision I would make then would again determine, would again determine my life experience so profoundly. Paul and I were married in 1976, and sadly, he died in 1985. My sadness was beyond anything I could imagine. Before Paul died, I remember asking him, 
who is going to wrap their arms around me to comfort me after you die? I had a lot of family and friends who literally wrapped their arms around me, many of you listening today, but it didn't make the pain go away. It was at this point in my life that I first realized that I couldn't expect any human being to be everything for me. The only one that could always be there for me was God through the sacrifice of his own son, Jesus. God was the only one whose arms would always be there for me the only one I could ever trust 100%. After all, because we all sin, and especially me, <laughs> none of us can always be there 100%. We are only human. It is possible. Then in 1988, I married Carl. Since then, he has been my rock. He helped me through breast cancer 14 years ago and has just put up with me every day. But there have been times when I expected him to be perfect, to always be there for me in ways no human could be, as I couldn't be for him either. We were the best we could be for each other as humans, but that isn't 100% all the time. We sin, we are imperfect. It isn't possible for us to be there all the time for each other. He couldn't anticipate and take care of my every need. No one but God can be there 100% of the time. Only God can be there to wrap his arms around me in those times when I can trust no other human. I hope this makes sense to you. What I offer to you, you may or may not already have. If you haven't already done this, you can have God in your life as the only one you can ever trust 100% of the time. All you have to do is tell God that you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that he died on the cross to save you from your sins so that when you die, you can spend eternity in heaven. It's a simple sentence to repeat, just like I threw a stick in the fire at church camp. It will change the rest of your life. I'm not suggesting that this will make your life easier or that this is the solution to your problems. However, this will make everything in your life that's happened before or after all of this make sense on your journey of life. The gift of salvation is free. You only have to ask. It is the best decision you will ever make. You don't have to change who you are, but may find yourself changing in ways you didn't even know possible. Hopefully, I have put into words what I have experienced in my life. There have been many other times when God has been the strength I needed, when I didn't know what else to do. I hope because I made a life-changing decision at age 13, I can help you now. God puts everyone in my life for me to help or for them to help me. I'm not sure what his purpose is for me and you, but maybe our purpose is being in each other's lives is for both of us to help the other. Love you all. Hello again, everyone. For our congregation message this morning, Carla asked people to share something that they appreciate that other people do at our church. And as you can imagine, it was difficult for people to pick just one thing, um, but they did their best. And then April, after being asked to contribute to that video, mentioned a great song that would be good for special music. And so I decided to combine those things. So you're going to hear a mixture of our special music along with congregations, things that they appreciate. Now I'm going to go first and say some things that I appreciate um, at our church. And that includes anybody who just steps up and volunteers anytime that anything needs done. Then there's people behind the scenes who, you know, make the music run, make sure the microphones work, troubleshoot things, um, make sure there's music and video during the service, people who handle the tithes and offerings that are given, people who simply smile while they're there because you know smiling is contagious, um, all of our greeters and people who pass out the bulletins, take attendance, volunteer on different committees that meet throughout the year to help our church function and improve. 
And of course, all of the children who come to church ready to learn about Jesus and who help me with my children's messages online every week, as well as their parents and grandparents. And of course, our pastor and his family, I know we all appreciate. So there are so many wonderful giving people at our church and I know we are truly blessed. And I hope that this video we've put together touches your heart the way it did mine as I was putting it together. So enjoy. to heaven and you were there with me we walked along the streets of gold beside the crystal sea we heard the angels singing then someone called your name you turned and saw a young man he was smiling as he came Said, friend, you may not know me now, but then he said, but wait. He used to teach my Sunday school when I was only eight. Every week you would say a prayer before the class would start. One morning when you said that prayer, I asked Jesus in my heart. I especially like the flowers that are changed every for every season. And I also appreciate the music, both the before, during, and after the service. And I appreciate all, all the people who are my friends that attend. I'm thankful for whoever brings the donuts. I'm so thankful for all the work that has been done to our Sunday school rooms, our nursery, and our youth room. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. And another man stood before you and said, Remember the time a missionary came to your church. His pictures made you cry. You didn't have much money, but you gave it anyway. Jesus took the gift you gave, and that's why I'm here today. My Sunday hug uh, is really appreciated. It uh, makes you feel welcome, makes you feel good, and it makes you feel like um, this person really cares about you. And I'm sure that's the case. The other thing that I really appreciate is our pianist. I think she is totally amazing. Uh, and when the pianist and the organist play together, that's even more amazing. Is our virtual services. I hope we continue to do those after we get back to church, as I think they're a great tool to reach out to people and maybe grow our church with. I had a friend from Matamora who attends a Catholic church who saw it somehow and said he thought our virtual service was really good. Hello all. I just wanted to take a moment and say how thankful and grateful I am for all the congregation members who take time to um, work with and help grow the youth of our congregation. I'm very thankful for all of you and thank you and blessings to each of you. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am alive.
life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. One by one they came as far as the eye could see. Each one somehow touched by your generosity. Little things that you had done and sacrifices made. Unnoticed on the earth, in heaven now proclaimed. Uh, this person is always there to give the best hugs to anybody and everybody. It doesn't matter whether this person is uh, a greeter for the day or just there to say hi to everybody and to show that he cares for everybody. I really appreciate the decorating that is done in the church for all the seasons. It really does make the, give you the sense of where we are in this, in the uh, yearly calendar, and it does give some beauty to the sanctuary. And I am thankful for those who give it their time and talents to keep our church in good shape. I know it's a lot of hard work, and I'm also thankful for those who show up, and by their presence, I am blessed every week that I'm there. I know up in heaven that you're not supposed to cry. I was almost sure there were tears in your eyes as Jesus took your hand and you stood before the Lord and he said my child look around you for great is your reward and one thing I really appreciate is when playing the piano or the organ and I look down the aisle to see if the ushers are ready to bring forward the offering or communion. They're always there prompt and ready. So, so whoever organizes them, a big thank you of appreciation. And to all the people that do that ushering, I appreciate that as well. Thank you. When I come into church on Sunday, the choir, the people who do spatial music, that really helps lift the church. That makes it something special, I think. So I really appreciate the people that put the time and the effort in to uh, show up for practices and rehearsals, and then on Sunday, bring life to the church. The playing of the guitars, the separate singing, the folks who lead the choir, the choir members, it just really makes the church special and it makes the church vibrant. I really appreciate all the time, like I said, and the effort that people have put in to help make our church come alive on Sunday. Thank you giving to the Lord I am alive that was changed thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you gave That was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave. I am so glad you gave.
When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages to buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said, and he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You give them something. Gospel according to Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. In our reading today, Jesus feeds the 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish. We all love to jump to ask or answer the question of how? How is that possible? How will we feed 5,000 men? How could this be possible? But we very often think naturally and the aspects of the supernatural or the possibility of supernatural miracle is the last thing that comes to our mind. Before we answer our how, let's talk about why. Why did Jesus not send the people home? Jesus had compassion even while he wanted to spend some time alone. He recognized the need of those around him and wanted to meet those needs. Jesus is not in the business of sending them away, rather bringing them together and closer. How can we meet those who are in need and those who are suffering? Every time when we ask the question of how, don't we operate life from the place of lack and place of scarcity? This season of life has shaken foundations of stability for every one of us. Our natural coping mechanism no longer works. We have no experience to manage such a global crisis. We are not ready for this forced social isolation. As the new normal is ruling out, we all are trying to develop new coping mechanisms. The question of why really exposes the purpose, passion, and intensity. We are all uh, reactive by nature, and we often don't consider the question of why before taking an action. My challenge for you today and uh, and for you and even for me this week is how we will have a paradigm shift from reactive mode to proactive mode. Those who ask the question of how operate life from a default or that there is never enough. This is what we call the scarcity mindset or the scarcity mentality. The scarcity mindset is a belief that there will never be enough. This is true with money, food, emotions, health. The fear holds us back and places us, place you and me in the place of worthlessness. When you change your mind from scarcity to abundance, you become tolerant of risk and fear. You start exploring the possibility of the supernatural. I genuinely believe there is enough for everyone. Albert Einstein once said, If I had an hour to solve the problem and my life depends on the uh, solution, I would spend the first 55 minutes determining the proper question to ask. For once I know the proper question, I could solve the problem in less than five minutes. 
I am sure we all remember the woodcutter story or the statement from Abraham Lincoln. Give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend first four sharpening the axe. While the disciples focused on how, Jesus' focus was why. This helps you and I with a sense of ownership and achievement. Your sense of purpose and your motivation matters. My calling is to help and inspire you to take purposeful actions so that you can achieve authentic results by challenging those boundaries of what you believe is possible. This involves areas of your life such as friends, health, finance, education, community service, family and work. Don't wait. The time will never be just right, said Napoleon Hill. You and I who live in this information age are blessed with answers for anything and everything that are freely available. The problem you and I face today is that we don't know how to ask the right question. Remember, we are the result of a generation or an education system that is punished or evaluated or rewarded based on our answer, not based on our question. We never received rewards for asking questions or asking the right questions. Why do you do what you do? If you cannot find your why, nothing else in life will work. I invite you to ask yourself why you are following your own life's path. In your way, in your day-to-day -day life or the work or relationship. Why are you struggling with death wishes, lack and destroying your health? Why does your life depend on drugs? Why do you associate yourself with abusing friends and family members? You might be thinking, Pastor, you are not pre preaching about the miracle of feeding 5,000. Why are you not entering into the subject? If we don't ask, we cannot get it. Dale Carnegie's advice some 80 some years back is to be a good listener. In order to be a good listener, we need to be asking so many more questions. A generation that win, we need to ask enough questions. Many people I talk to you today after having a conversation is that I wish they could ask me more questions. We hold back our questions for many reasons. We might be egocentric, apathetic, overconfident, eager to impress others with our own thoughts and stories and ideas, or fearful that we may ask the wrong question. The question of why is not a mathematical question, rather it is a philosophical one. While what and how are functional, why is inspirational. And it gives you and I purpose and direction, direction for life, the life purpose. I'm sure asking the question of why eliminates confusion. As someone said, the two most important days of your life are the day you are born and the day you figure out why you are born. Life is a journey. When you don't move forward, you dwell on the past. And that is when you become stuck. Everything happens to you, meant to happen to you. They built you up for what your true purpose is. When we talk about Facebook, for instance, the following statement encapsulates the why of Facebook. It says, we are building Facebook to make the world more open and transparent, which we believe will create greater understanding and connection. Sometimes the question of why can slow you down. Let God's how become our why as we recall that Jesus said, you, 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 you give them something, you give them something to eat. 
I mean you who are broken, who are isolated, you who are the troublemaker, you the one who is struggling with addiction. This is same when we talk collectively as a family or as a community of faith. You as a community of faith give them something. You are part of the answer. My challenge for you this week is that you read the scripture uh, so uh, is you know twice as you encounter the red letters. Sometimes we are being called as people of red letters. In our reading today there are only a few words that are highlighted in red or directly quoted Jesus. Jesus replied in verse 16 they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. Verse 18, bring them here to me. What we see is a divine dissatisfaction. You bring them and give them something. This is one thing to ask God for an answer to a prayer and another thing to be an answer to someone's prayer. Changed people can always change the world. That is, call, that, is call, that is a call for every person, an opportunity to serve Christ and His kingdom. These are the few fundamental principles I learned from this text today. First of all, God is your sole source and supplier. And my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus says Philippians chapter 419 when you give God what you have he enlarges and satisfies every hungry heart can God do this without you yes he can but most of the time he does it with you and through you he is in the business of supernatural multiplication. No matter what your position or profession, God has designed a system to bless you. In fact, you are uh, not limited to your paycheck, your education, your bank balance, your color, your race, your connection, your ability or your connections, your connectivity, your, or you, you who live in the natural world. When God is your source and your supplier, He will leave some room for Him to bless you and uh, prosper you and increase your territory. Can you, live in, can you imagine living in the supernatural? Can you imagine yourself as a, ourselves as a community living in the realm of supernatural? We need to leave the realm of ordinary and natural to live in the realm of supernatural. It is time for you and me to excel in the things that God has for us, for you and for me. We have to leave, have to leave the realm of physical and live in the realm of spiritual. We are guided and controlled and led by the Holy Spirit. Enjoy this life of victory in Jesus Christ and partner with the Holy Spirit and live in the realm of supernatural, my friends. It all starts with five loaves of bread and two fish. You don't need much for God to multiply, to enlarge, to increase. As long as he is in the, in the business of increasing, enlarging and multiplying. It doesn't matter how little you have. When it enlarges, it enlarges. When it actually multiplies, it multiplies. The effects of multiplication is what we see. Even when we deal with this unseen enemy, it just multiplies, it increases. Don't you see God? And don't you see ourselves? Can we open our eyes and see the God who is in the business of enlarging, multiplying, and meeting the needs of every hungry heart? I know you are hungry. I know I am hungry. I'm hungry so that God can take out this anxiety and fear out of me and we can come together as a community of faith. We can move forward in the Lord and work for His kingdom. Friends, my brothers and sisters, 
Let me invite you to ask this question of why. Why do you do what you do? What if God enlarges in what you are doing? You may be working, you may be working from paycheck to paycheck. You may be struggling with addictions. You may be struggling with anxiety and fear. Let me speak to you. Let me speak this, speak uh, to you and invite you to accept the power of Holy Spirit in your life today. Invite Holy Spirit into your heart today. So that he can enlarge your influence. He can enlarge in everything that you are doing. Even though you may have only five loaves and two fish in your hand. It may only feed you once. And uh, once you run out of these resources. And I'm, I'm, I'm worried. And I'm, 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 I'm anxious. What will I do? I don't, I'm running out of resources. But let me invite you to give that resource to God. So that he can enlarge it. He can do a supernatural miracle in your life today. Like never before, God is in the business of enlarging what we handed over to Him. There are so many stories similar to that in the Bible. Throughout the Bible, as you read from Genesis to Revelation, God is in the business, in the, in the supernatural business, and some call it a miracle. Supernatural business of enlarging our territory, enlarging the resources that we have. This may be an ordinary conversation, coming to your room, coming to your place. But let me invite you to open your heart so that God can enter into your lack, into your fear, into your uncomfortable places, into your areas of anxiety zone, and He may convert into a place of rest, a place of joy, a place of grace and a place of peace. For his glory and his kingdom so that he can feed the 5,000 who are hungry. We live in a world where a Christ is needed more than ever. His gospel message need to be preached more than ever. The fear need to be eliminated like more than ever. In this context and I believe and I pray for God to come into our lives so that he can work supernatural miracles in our life. Let me ask you to think, what if you are healed? What if that your financial crisis are over? What if what you are doing, if it is, you know, just like the five loaves of bread and two fishes handed over to Jesus, that he bless it and give it back so that the miracles can happen? Can supernatural miracle, can that be your friend? Say, so can you live in the, world, in the realm of supernatural? May God help you to do that. May God, I challenge you to do that. May Holy Spirit, may we allow Holy Spirit to come into areas of our life so that we can experience God's supernatural miracles. Let's pray. Let's invite God into our fear, into our anxiety, into our realm of nature, natural, uh, so that he can convert into supernatural. Lord Jesus, we come before you just like those five loaves of bread and two fish that is handed over to you by this boy or through the disciples. Lord, we just hand over what we have into you, O oh God. It seems it is nothing. It seems like it is a normal thing. Everything we can see it with our visible eyes. It's all normal. It's all what we find is fear, anxiety, stress and uh, isolation. Lord, we hand this over to you. We commit our church and our members. Lord Jesus, help us to leave and take this fear out of our life. And help us to leave with the courage and strength that you give us, O oh God. As a community of faith. We commit ourselves into your hand. Ask your Lord to come and help us. In Jesus' precious name, we offer this prayer. Amen and Amen.
of our Lord Jesus Christ love of the father fellowship of the holy spirit be with you today and every day amen and amen <laughs>